Hey what's up guys welcome back to Gamer Masala and tonight we're talking about how to defeat Belmont Helmut with only one Gother throughout the entire squad. So if you do not have a Gother, if you didn't have the diamonds to pull Gother back then and you, if you're having trouble doing this boss on hell mode and if you haven't been able to farm those mats rest assured this is a strategy that can help you get through. So before we go into the teams, a major shout out to Crow, my fellow guild member who has been phenomenal in running these uh, Belmont bosses with me and we have been able to come up with a strategy together. And guys, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please hit that subscribe button so we can grow as a channel and provide more valuable content. Alright, so let's talk about teams. So you need a full build Asterosa. I don't think that you absolutely need to have SA5 on an Asterosa. You just need to have him at SA4 at the bare minimum. SA5 just gives him an additional defense boost and that really helps when he, um, he has to take damage when he has his counter stance on. Next up you need Leonis Liz because you want to rush Ulsa as soon as possible and with her passive she starts off at 2 ultimate gauge orbs. Next you need Guild Thunder with an HP defense set. He doesn't quite need to be super awakened, um, you can pretty much do well with uh, one that is not. Um, the Tarmiel uh, association is just so he, t he gets a little more HP every turn. The Tarmiel link is not completely necessary for this, just use any one of your units as link which have a high defense stat, like uh, Green Dian. Both versions of Green Dian actually have a really high defense. And then you need Merlin on backline because you want to start off with another ult gauge orb. Alright, so let's talk about team 2. So you need at least one Gother in this entire um, hell mode because you absolutely need the attack related stat increase and then you need a Zaratrust that has a UR set. If you do not have a UR set, you can just snap on any attack defense uh, set on him. There is no point in crit damage because he doesn't crit very often. And then you need Helbrum for that attack related stat increase because um, when you boost Helbrum along with um, uh, I guess as our guild thunder, as our trash is gonna get a lot of attack, and then you need Kane and the backline for um, additional uh, d damage in death matches. Next up, ult food is extremely crucial. All of this play is about rushing ults, and you need to start off with an additional ult gauge orb in all of your tunes. So Zyratrice is one of the best PvE characters in game because if his hit does not make a critical strike he gets an insane amount of um, damage uh, with his next strike and that makes him a really strong a really viable character in PvE and especially for this boss. So we're gonna rely on Zyratrice as our primary damage dealer while the rest of the units are sort of built around him to support him. Alright, so for the first turn, you're gonna rush Helbrum ult because you're gonna want his ultimate move to cancel stances on turn 3. And then the second team rushes um, Liz. So for this turn, I happen to get two of Asterosa's cards. And uh, it's not really necessary to get uh, Asterosa's ult on the first turn. Mostly because you're not gonna use his ultimate on turn 2 anyway. It's also important to put a counter up this turn because you do want that extra damage. Even if you have a bronze counter, it takes about a third of his HP out. Um, and if you have a silver counter, it's about half of his HP out with a well-built Asterosa. For this turn, just use the Liz ult and then fill up everybody else's ultimate gauge orbs and dump all the cards that you don't need like SL Guild Thunder's um, attack card and then Liz's ranged card can all be dumped. Gother Pumpkin Bombs can be dumped as well. If you also have any of Guild Thunder's attack boosts, then definitely merge on those because next turn when we rank up, this is going to be extremely essential. Um, it's also important that you do not use um, Estros' ult this turn. If you do end up using it this turn, um, the boss will still build his ultimate cage and on the next turn he will unleash his ultimate and that will wipe out the entire squad. So you have to save it just until, um, until the boss's ultimate is ready. This is one of the most crucial plays because Asterosa is going to stall the boss for another turn while you get all of your buffs up. So for uh, for this run we did happen to have some rank ups there and ideally if you do not have rank ups it should still be okay with um, Helbrum's buff and with SR Giltender's buff it should still be fine. You would have enough attack and attack related stats. 
So here you can use your Giltender's ult and that's gonna deal some damage and since the boss is not gonna attack back, um, the attack related stat increase won't matter too much. So since everybody pretty much has kill thunder you can easily 6 of 6 him and his ult will do some decent damage there so for this turn i also happen to get a bunch of counter cards um i really don't need that gold counter over there there is a high chance that we probably won't need a counter at all later but just in case just have one counter ready and that should uh, even if it's bronze it should be okay this turn just go for the kill so gil's ultimate will give him uh, give the boss a lot of shock damage and that should significantly drop his hp and then you can just use any of your remaining attack cards or go through ult if that's ready to take the boss down this turn also rush asterosa's ult you're gonna have to rush it all the time because asterosa's ult is one of the best things in this especially against this boss because he can stall and buy you a little more time So as you can see, Asteros' ult is ready this turn and this was completely because of RNG. It's not that you need it here. So if you don't have it on this turn, you just have to build it and get it on the next turn. I'm not going to use the Asterosa ult on this turn anyway. For this turn, what uh, what you need to do is dump all of your Zyratras cards and then they will deal massive damage. And also if you have any Asterosa cards, the charge damage will also be pretty massive. So just dump all of your attack cards here. You are going to want to take this phase down as quickly as possible. For this phase, you should have a Zanatras ult ready, and you should have Asterosa's ult ready as well. So on this phase, the boss actually hits you pretty hard, and every time you hit the boss, it gets an attack related stat increase, which um, which can pretty much take down your team in just a couple AOAs. So the best thing to do here is actually use that um, Asterosa ult. But that's unless you happen to have a gold or a silver counter there you can use a counter you just need to make sure that um whoever you're playing with has a address already which he should because of all of those um lizards and have at least some zyatras cards to take him down or you can also use that counter if you do have um any charge cards asterosa charge cards in your hand otherwise it's better to play it safe and use that asterosa ult and then stall for another turn and hope for more zyatras cards um or hope for more charge cards So this bit is a little dependent on RNG because the boss may use airways instead of single target attacks and that will take um, your HP down by quite a bit. The good thing is that because uh, we did use a, a Liz heal earlier and um, else we have been um, filling up our HP quite a bit and any damage that he does um, especially because he has a very little attack rate it's that boost now should not matter too much. And on this turn, all you have to do is use a Zyatras ult, use all of his cards, and then use all of your charge cards. Any attack card you have, use it against this pass, because if you don't take him down in this turn, then he's definitely taking you down in the other. And that's pretty much it right there. All you need is a well-built Zyatras and um, an Astrosa that can stall for a while. And if you like this video guys, please hit that subscribe button. It is really encouraging to see more subscribers, because you feel like putting out more content that can uh, really help the player base. And again, thanks for watching and stay safe.